Hi everyone, so a few weeks ago I did a video on a controller for solar, a solar monitor or something I called it, um, and it was working and I wanted to put it onto a PCB and therefore uh, be able to take my breadboard back and uh, generally make it better because without all these wires it's better, you know, when you've got tracks on a PCB. So I spent some time making a PCB and then, uh, you know, as in, in the CAD software, and I got that working, you know, I learned how to use Design Spark PCB, I'm not too bad at it now. And then after a while, I decided that I would actually make my own PCB, and it took me a few days to learn how to master it. But I've done it now, I can make PCBs. Um, and there'll be videos about that in time to come, you know, I'll, I'll sort that out. But anyway, um, this video is about this controller, or this monitor. So I've made the monitor, and I'll just show you the components. This is not all of the components, or these are not all the components, I should say. Um, but, you know, it's, I'll explain why later. But you can see the screen there, and there's a Reax module. That communicates with the um, the solar shed, and it gets details about, you know, all this sort of stuff. Voltage, amperage, uh, load, and all that sort of stuff. I can cycle through the menus. I've got a voltage regulator. And I've added in this uh, this thing here, which is a level shifter, which goes from 5 volts to 3.3, .3 and vice versa. And of course, I've got the Pro Mini. Now, I remember mentioning about the Pro Mini because um, the original one had the Nano in it, Dad, but we don't need a Nano because the Nano is a bit more expensive. I'm yeah? do a video in a minute. Okay, okay, you can help in a second. So, um, so that's the situation anyway. So I did all this stuff, all this stuff. Did the wiring, did the coding changed what I needed to change and then I made the PCB now I'll show you about how I make the PCB in a minute you know on the software I'm not going to go into how you make the how you physically make the PCB but I'll show you the software um, but anyway this is the PCB so on here it all works perfectly yeah on the breadboard it all works perfectly I've made my PCB which is here which I actually impressed myself with the quality of this thing as you can see I made two mistakes but sadly, uh, the PCB doesn't work. So after me spending ages learning how to make the PCB and all that sort of stuff, it doesn't work. Now, I've done a redesign for this little issue here. However, it simply doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So here it is, uh, all, you know, everything pushed in. And if I reset it, you can see that the TFT backlight comes on. So that tells me that that part of the circuit is working, so the TIP4142C is working, that's the PNP transistor, so the base thing for that, the capacitor and the transistor are working, we know that, because um, it's switched off, so the nano is working a little bit, it must be, in order to, to drive the transistor. However, <coughs> the buttons don't work, which, why wouldn't they work, it's exactly the same wiring. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, yeah, I don't understand that. It's the same wiring, so w why wouldn't it work? You can see the wiring there. Okay, it's a little bit rough, but the connection seems sound to me. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. The buttons don't work. Um, uh, about the RYLR module that is also not working and again it's really simple it goes from TX of the Nano uh, sorry the Pro Mini through a simple voltage divider which I've checked to the receiver of the module and the transmitter out of there back to this and I've checked the tracks for that and it's all fine there's a capacitor there I'll double, just double check that just to um, to bridge the ground connection with 3.3 volts and that's also fine uh, but yeah, it doesn't work. I mean, the when the thing starts up, it attempts to talk to this module, and this module doesn't respond. So why wouldn't it respond? I don't understand why it wouldn't respond. Maybe there's no power getting to it or something, but I don't know how that's possible. Um, something I'll have to check. So I've just quadruple checked the power to the Reax module, and that's fine. So why wouldn't it receive it's really simple, it's just two two small connections and it doesn't work. Anyway, um, and because it's not receiving of course I can't test the LED because um, when it receives the LED blinks. 
So, yeah, there's that. Buttons don't work, etc. Um, the other thing as well is on my laptop here, I've got it connected and I can see the uh, software serial output and software serial's working, but then it, there's just no, like if I press these buttons, there's just no reaction whatsoever. Um, so what it does, it attempts to talk to the Reacts module and then it gives up and then there's nothing after that. But it obviously still is, is working because you can see it's transmitting something and I think that's, well I don't know, what is that transmitting? I'll have to find out. I can't remember. Um, but it obviously is working a little bit because it's controlling the backlight okay. So now about the actual TFT itself, there's just no input to it whatsoever. So even though these things are connected properly, just as they are over there, it just doesn't work, there's nothing at all. I'll just show you once again, there's no data. Um, and this is wired up fine, it's exactly the same as far as I can see. Um, so, I don't know. So this video was supposed to be a really exciting video about my new um, uh, monitor, you know, my new monitor. So this was going to go on here like this. And I'd have the buttons over here like this something like that and it would be just a little box thing that you know is in a neat, nice neat container and it would control solar. That's why I was quite excited about showing you but uh, it just won't work. Um, so I suppose it's probably back to the drawing board. I'll make another PCB and give it another go. So yeah I've checked and checked and checked. I can't see any problems so back to the breadboard um, just like before and I suppose a redesign and we'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, so just before I go, I'm going to show you the PCB that I've designed and um, I'll have a quick chat about that with you and then um, and then I'll be off and um, restart on this I suppose. Right, so this is the PCB that I created and this is Design Spark. Um, this is after the, uh, well, do you remember the two wires, the yellow wires that I repaired? This is after that change, but it's only a simple thing anyway. But yeah, this is the board. Uh, so I've got the uh, transistor there, the NPN transistor, which is driven by a 2K resistor, which is driven by pin 8. And um, that controls the backlight to the TFT, so it goes down here, and there's power and ground. Um, I've got the thing to give the uh, TFT some power as well, which I think is is 3.3. Um, then these are the four, excuse me, <coughs> these are the four signal lines, which is basically um, clock, then uh, MOSI, because it's SPI, then we've got um, data, data is it, something like that? And then uh, another one. So it's data command and A0 or something. I can't remember the the exact details, but there are four signal lines. Now there's chip select as well, but I'm holding chip select. Um, I think it's low. You hold it low, I think, or is it high? I can't remember. Um, I'll have to check that, actually. I'll have to check. But um, there's the PCB anyway. So I've got... What else can I pin, uh, point out here? This is for the buttons. And here you can see that I've had to minimize these um, these ones here so I can put a track through a very thin track this is for the AMS 117 that's for a switch and that's for the power then over here this is for the Reax module and I've got a capacitor there just to make sure it's always got enough voltage and that's the same for the uh, for the uh, transistor I've got an LED here which is driven by pin 2 and that blinks every time it receives a signal uh, from the main, um, well, the solar shed, basically. And that's pretty much all there is to the PCB. So just because it looks nice, I'm going to show you the 3D view. And there it is. So I'll just go up. It's took me a while to learn how to use this software, but it is really good. It's really, really good. Um, oh, and there's the level shifter as well, which I didn't show you. So let's go back there. So there's the level shifter. Um, basically, we want the signal to go from 5 volts to 3.3 to um, to drive the TFT, and um, and that's everything really. So you can see here that um, it's got like a copper fill, and I only recently learned how to do this. But let me undo it for you. 
that's what the PCB would look like without the fill, like that. Which you can do it that way, but you've got to then join all the grounds together. Well, with fill, um, oops, hang on. Well, with fill, it looks like that. Um, let me just refresh it. So there you go. So that's my first PCB. Now, it's taken me a long time to be able to get this thing to work and to work out how to make it easy for myself, but I can do it now. So I guess with all the problems, I'll have to uh, make a new PCB, but... Um, Oh well, it's just one of those things. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, although it's not really gone to plan, at least I've got some sort of video explaining how it's gone, and uh, it's just one of those things I suppose, you always fail at some point. Anyway, thanks for watching, bye!